Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. So we have all been in that situation before where you get on location and maybe the conditions are uh, unfolding very, very quickly and you don't have much time and you're kind of scurrying around, you're frantic, you, you get a couple of images off and you get back home and you realize that you know, you're know you in, in way too much of a rush, you, you got your, your camera settings co completely off and your photo is completely ruined or maybe the conditions were unfolding quickly and you just flat out just picked the wrong uh, camera settings and your photos just, you know, you're looking at it at face value and you're like, this image is completely ruined. And it's a, it's kind of a, uh, it's, it's a tough pill to swallow sometimes, especially when it's a composition you really like or the, the conditions were absolutely fantastic. But there's quite a few situations out there that uh, you can actually save those kind of photos. But there, there's really two scenarios that are, I hate to say impossible, but uh, there's two scenarios that are very, very difficult to solve. One is which if your, your image is completely out of focus. If your photo is out of focus, there's not much you can do to kind of bring it back in focus. There's no way to really sharpen a photo out of focus back into focus. So that's one big thing. And the other is blown out highlights or overexposed highlights. Because when that occurs, your camera basically doesn't record any information. And I got a good example right here. So for this particular image, you can see that the highlights are completely blown out. If I hover over this uh, little arrow in the upper right hand corner of the histogram, you can see all the area in red is area of blown out highlights. Now I can bring these areas back, or I should say I can just kind of reduce it to where those red areas are gone. Let me bring the highlights down. But you can see all those little pockets of area that were highlighted in red. There's no information there. It's just completely white. So no matter how, how, how far I bring the exposure down or bring the highlights down, you can't bring back that information. It's, it's completely lost. And that's, those are really the, the two situations that I have found that uh, you really can't do much for. But outside of that, the vast majority of scenarios you can pretty much solve for. And that's the, the topic of this week's video is uh, how to edit horrible landscape photos and you know whether, whether or not you can actually save certain ones. So I went back and I found some um, of uh, my own horrible photos, which was, there was absolutely plenty of them. But I wanted to find one that was a very uh, common scenario where you happen to be shooting directly into the sun. And, and here is that image right here. As you can see, the, the sun is completely blown out, but we can, uh, we're going to do some uh, kind of um, editing wizardry around that to kind of make that sun glow a little bit, not looks like it is so blown out. But this is a really common scenario right here. You know, you got a bright sky, very, very dark foreground. I wasn't using any filters in this scenario. The sun was rising very, very quickly and I was in a rush and I wanted to make sure that I was getting the sun just as it broke the horizon here so I could kind of get these, uh, these uh, sun rays right through here. So I was rushing around and I didn't take enough, um, I should say I didn't remain calm enough to get the correct camera setting. So we're gonna go through this uh, uh, image right here, start to finish and see what we can do to kind of bring this back to life. So there's a couple of things we could do if we want to, uh, you know, make the sky look a little bit better, make the, the sun area not look so bright. You know, of course we could bring the exposure down, but what that's doing is just making the foreground here even darker. So that's not really helping us because if we hover over the clipping indicator, which is under exposed shadows or area of pure black, you can see that everything indicated in blue, there is no information. So that is not something that we want to do in that scenario either. You know, we could bring up the shadows. That's definitely something we could possibly do as well. But what we're going to do is we're going to get a little bit more targeted. Instead of using global adjustments, we're going to start off using local adjustments and at least get this photograph to an area where we can start um, using some of those global adjustments to edit this. Because as it is right now, it's a, it's a complete mess. So we just kind of got to get it back to square one. So I'm going to come up here to the, uh, the filters and let's do select sky. Let Lightroom select the sky here. And as you can see by this mask, everything in white at the top is the sky. And that looks pretty good. Stay organized. Let's label this as sky. And then let's just bring the exposure down a touch. Let's bring the highlights down a little bit. And you can see that the, the sun is starting to kind of get that classic kind of crunchy, overly defined look that happens a lot of times when you bring the highlights in the sky down or you bring the exposure down in the sky. But in just a couple steps, we're gonna make that sun kind of glow and get rid of that kind of defined look and make it look a little bit more realistic. I really just wanna get the sky to a point that looks good minus the sun at this point. Maybe we'll even warm it up just a touch to about right there. And I think that looks pretty good. Let's create another mask. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna select sky again which it did, 
but I'm going to select the mask and come down here to these three little dots and drop this down to invert. And basically what that's going to do is do the opposite of selecting the sky, which is going to select everything but the sky, which is in this scenario is the land. So let's label this one land. And let's go ahead and let's bring these shadows up quite a bit to something about maybe there. Bring the exposure up a little bit. I think that looks good. Maybe even warm it up some as well because the sun was actually kind of raking across this seaweed right through here, but it was in a little bit of shadow area, so it didn't quite come through, but I want to kind of bring that out. So I'm going to warm it up a touch, bring the shadows up a little bit. Uh, is there anything else I want to do right now? Maybe bring the whites up just a little bit to add a little bit of additional brightness. Maybe even bring the highlights up just a touch. Let's toggle this on and off just to see what we did. So that's a big adjustment just to the land itself. So now I want to go back and let's go ahead and create a radial filter over the sun. And let's get away from that kind of overly crunchy or that really defined look. Because when you, when you look directly at the sun, which obviously I don't recommend you do, but when you look at the sun, you don't really see it as defined as it, it, it looks in this image right now. It normally has kind of a glowing, ethereal, kind of atmospheric look to it. So we're going to add that back. So I'm going to hit create mask. I'm going to come down here to radial gradient and let's label this as, uh, I mean, well, I tried to, to name it sun, but for some reason it just wasn't working. So let's just come up here, make a nice wide gradient all the way across this area right through here. And I don't want to reduce the exposure, but let's go ahead and add some negative dehaze because that is definitely going to kind of smooth out that area a little bit. It's going to make it not as defined. It's going to add this kind of glowing, kind of ethereal, atmospheric look around the sun. And in clarity, what's kind of cool is if you watch the area around the sun when I put the, when I add positive clarity to it, that really adds to that glow because when you add too much clarity, you're also adding a lot of luminance to your photograph and you normally don't want to do that. But this is one of the very few scenarios where I think it looks really good to add too much clarity to it. So I'm going to kind of pump this up and I'll kind of rock this back and forth again so you can really see how that looks. And I think it looks pretty good. So we'll bring it up to about right there. Maybe we'll reduce the texture though and just kind of soften that up just a little bit more. Maybe just a little bit more dehaze. Maybe we'll pump up the highlights just a little bit. Maybe add a little bit of warmth there. Just a touch. And let's toggle this on and off and just see how this looks. So that's the before and after, before and after. And if you look up here at the thumbnail, you can really see the difference as we toggle this on and off. And I think that looks pretty good right now. Maybe we'll come back and revisit it in a few steps, but that's a really, really great way to get away from that kind of overly crunchy or overly um, uh, defined looking sun and kind of add that glow back. So now that we have the photograph, to a point, let me close this down, to a point that we can actually begin editing it. I want to make a couple changes to the white balance. Definitely want to warm this up a little bit, maybe introduce a little bit of magenta tint to it. Uh, let's put a little bit of contrast in the overall photograph and maybe bring the overall shadows up just a touch. And I'm going to soften down the overall image with negative clarity. And then maybe we'll even add a little bit of positive texture there as well. That's just kind of my own personal personal taste. I like to soften down the, the larger to mid-size detail using clarity and then enhance the smaller size detail in the photograph. I just feel like it gets away from that kind of overly digital or overly crunchy look. So I'm going to do that and then let's add a little bit of vibrance right through here. Now you can see this area right through here. You can definitely see that the sun rising here is casting a little bit of light through here and it is kind of coming up but uh, this isn't the greatest photograph in the world but I do think it does have a little bit of good light. So I kind of want to bring that out a little bit more. So I'm going to come back up to the filters, create new mask, and let's do a radial gradient. I'm going to drag it right across, large gradient here, across this area right through there. I think that that looks pretty good. Yeah. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to boost the exposure just a touch. I'm going to bring the highlights up a little bit. Maybe add a little bit of additional warmth because the sun is hitting that area. But I want to refine it a little bit further. I don't want to add this adjustment to the highlights and the shadows of this region. I want to use a luminosity mask or a luminance range mask to only highlight the highlight area, to only identify the highlight areas. 
So I'm going to come up here to radio gradient and hit these three dots and drop it down. I'm going to hit intersect mask with a luminance range. And then I'm going to hold down the option key. I'm on a Mac. I'm going to drag this over to the right till only the areas in that bottom right hand corner that are red. Those are going to be the areas that I want. So if I take it too far over, you can see that that red area starts to fade away, but I want to bring it to about right here. And as you can tell, the areas in red are just the areas that are, uh, are illuminated. Everything in black is going to be the shadows. So that made that area much, much more refined. And if I toggle it on and off, you can see it's very subtle, but it's definitely picking it up. Let me add a little bit more highlights, a little bit more exposure, just so you can easily see that at home, toggle that on and off one more time. But if we, if we toggle on and off all of these layers and all of these masks, you can see that almost all of the adjustments we did to this image was using local adjustments as opposed to global adjustments. So I'm going to turn off all the masks. So this is where we started with the masks and this is where we're at right now. So this is before and this is after. So a, a huge difference so far. Now, I think I'm going to, as I pretty much always do is um, close down these masks. I'm going to come down to effects. I want to add a vignette to this photograph and I want to do a little bit of work with the camera or the, uh, the color calibration right through here. I think I'm going to bring the hue of the blue primary down a little bit to maybe about right there. It's going to kind of make that seaweed not quite as green, maybe a little bit more towards the, the, uh, the browner side. And I think that that looks pretty good right there. And I also am going to crop this just a little bit. I just want to bring this bottom area up a touch to about there. And is the horizon a little off? Um, I always like to, to zoom in on a, on a photograph like this and just kind of drag it up to this area of my screen that I know is a perfectly straight line. And it might be a little off, but it, it, it is pretty close right there. But let me come back up here and now let's go through here. I might even add just a little bit of saturation. I'm going to come back to the, uh, the sun layer, which is right here. And is there anything else I want to do? I think I'm going to add a little bit more negative dehaze, maybe even a little bit more clarity just to kind of add to that glowing look. Maybe even drag this out just a little bit more and let's toggle this on and off. Let me expand this out a little bit so we can more easily work with it. Toggle that on and off because I really want to see this. One of my favorite aspects of this photograph is what we were able to do with the sun. And I think it's a total, total transformation and it looks really, really good. So let me close the, uh, the filters down. Um, I might warm this up a little bit more and then part of the finishing touch is going to be adding a little bit of split toning to the highlights because I, for me, this photograph is all about the highlights. You got a, a you know, nice rising sun that's breaking the horizon. You got some nice um, sun rays, got a little bit of nice warm light kind of raking across the seaweed in the foreground. And I'm going to come down to color grading because I really want to bring that out. I'm going to click this wheel right here, which is highlights. And I'm going to go ahead and just pick this warm color here, maybe even warm it up a little bit. I'll warm it up too much just so you can easily see it. When I toggle this on and off, you can really see it if you pay attention to the sun area. So this is before and oops, excuse me, after before and after. So I probably wouldn't do it that much. It's a very subtle difference. Maybe I'll even bring the, the luminance of the highlights up a little bit but it definitely is adding a little bit to this overall photograph. I think I'm going to come over here to the tone curve as well. And I'm going to kind of lift those blacks a little bit. It's once again, it's a, a very personal thing. It's like me using negative clarity and positive texture just to soften down a lot of the larger detail, lifting the blacks to where they're not such a deep black for me kind of gets away from that overly digital look and maybe makes the image look a little bit more smooth. So I'm going to put an anchor point here in the bottom left hand corner, one in the middle, and one on this intersection point here in the upper right hand corner. And then one more down here where the darker midtones are in the shadows. Whoops. And I'm going to kind of lift this tail here till the output is about 25. And then maybe bring this one up to about 30. And then if I zoom into this area right here and toggle this on and off, if you look at this area of deep black, this is before and after before and after. So it's a subtle difference, but it definitely kind of smooths out the overall photograph. I'm going to close this down and go back to the basic section, maybe lift these blacks just a little bit as well globally. 
maybe even lift the white point a touch as well and maybe a little bit more contrast but overall i think it's starting to look pretty good but uh, a total transformation so this is where we started this is before and this is after so once again this is before and this is after a total transformation and yes the sun was blown out there was no data recorded in the in the dead center of the sun which is a very common scenario but i think by using that radio gradient we kind of saved that so uh, i do think that that turned out well so before i do wrap up this week's video i do just want to say a real quick thanks to the, the longtime sponsor of the channel which is squarespace who I use for all of my website and e-commerce needs. Squarespace provides a dynamic and attractive online platform to create your website. You can display your photography using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs and customize the layout and look and feel of your gallery just so you can make it your own. With Squarespace's traffic overview feature, you can track trends and page visits and views to better optimize your content. And you can even grow and engage with your customers with Squarespace's email campaign tools, which will enable you to create engaging emails that match your website with your products or blog posts and logo, just so your messaging remains consistent. So if you're looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, check out squarespace.com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So I do hope that was helpful. I know that I, ha I have a ton of photos that look just like this where you're, you're shooting directly into the sun and maybe the sky looks okay or the sky is completely blown out and the foreground is completely dark or, or whatever the case may be. There's a ton of scenarios that I have found myself in where I'm either rushing around I get my camera settings wrong and I ruin the photograph or I have plenty of time and I just ruin the photograph just because I wasn't given enough care or attention to what I was doing in the camera settings that I was selecting. But as we just proved, there is a lot you can do to save a lot of the of terrible landscape photos outside of uh, just out of focus images or area large areas of completely blown out highlights. But for the most part, you can you can do quite a bit. And once again, this is where we started and this is where we're at right now. This is the before and this is the after. And I think the after version looks quite a bit better. So I do hope you were able to pick up at least one little nugget of information that you can apply to some of your landscape photos moving forward. And I'd encourage you, go find some of your own terrible photos and try some of these techniques on them, especially the sun technique. I really like doing that a lot of times. I find it to, it's fun to do. And uh, just see if you can maybe breathe a little bit of new life into some of your older photos. So. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. I'll do my best to get back in touch with you as soon as possible. And if you enjoyed this week's video, of course, if you could give it a thumbs up, uh, comment, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already, share the video with friends if you really enjoyed it that much, I would greatly appreciate it. And as always, I really do appreciate you watching this week's video and I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.